How much water is there on Mars that we can find, period, so far? Ancient water on Mars mostly bonded with clay soils and may have never escaped the atmosphere. On a planet like Mars, the air pressure is low enough that water will separate back into water vapor, one of the many substates or mid-states between one type of matter position and another. We have solids, liquids, and gases. Between the liquids and gases, we get vapors. There is a thin layer of rocky and dusty material covering a subsurface layer of permafrost all over the planet. Ice concentrations at the surface average is around 18... 14 something percent, and it's mostly carbonated ice water, just carbonated ice, as well as brine and carbonated water, etc. Sometimes it's just water that's turned into ice. So it's ice permafrost. This also includes underground versions of glaciers that keep moving. By having other materials besides just pure water, it is still able to flow and move around. And it can still turn into and sublimate into water vapor. If it gets low enough temperature, it drops out of the air and forms frost. These frosts do eventually remelt and go back in, and at exactly ideal conditions, they can behave, if they're not pure water, into a liquid that works at such a low pressure at such low temperatures, depending. But for the most part, it's frozen solid. Degrees of latitude. At or below 60 degrees of latitude down to its equator, we get a 5-inch thick layer or an 18% concentration underground at various depths. Above 70 degrees latitude, we can get anything up to 100 feet thick, and it's 25% concentration in the matter. It's more and more concentrated the further north or south you go. At the poles, it can be 2 miles thick, and at 100% concentration or very nearly that. And again, it'll be mixtures of salts, pure water, uh, methane mixed with it, dry ice, which is carbon dioxide, or carbonated water instead. There's a crater that has an estimated 530 cubic miles of brine ice alone. Just one crater. So far, we know of anywhere from 1 to 3 million cubic miles of ice having been detected at or near the surface of Mars, one meter down all the way down to, again, maybe a couple of miles deep, depending on the method for use. That's 1% of what the Earth has. But if you gave Mars Earth conditions by jacking up the temperature and the pressure by dumping a lot of carbon dioxide into it, for instance, or relieving it from the surface, as depicted in in one of the movies Arnold Schwarzenegger was in, you'd get it covering about 40% of the surface because the surface of Mars is not uniform. It has some of the deepest canyons and valleys in existence. However, if the air pressure and temperature were similar to Earth, it would then turn into water vapor (coughs) and rain and fill up every pocket everywhere and keep recycling water. Just because you have oceans doesn't mean that they have to stay in the ocean. Also, that would have a tendency of purifying the water into drinkable, mostly drinkable rainwater landing on the ground and do exactly what happens on Earth anyway. Now, if you did it as a uniform surface area over the entire planet, if you made the entire surface area of Mars completely uniform, just taking the average height and making it perfectly smooth, that means Mars would be covered with 115 feet deep, approximately, of water. It would be an ocean planet. It isn't, you know, a third of the surface area like Earth has. It would be 40%, you know, excuse me, two-thirds like Earth has. But like I said, it's it got 1% of the water on it. And over the majority of the surface area, it'd be about, you know, maybe 100 feet deep. 40 feet deep, 10 feet deep, doesn't matter. So again, the planet has plenty of water. It's, well, not plenty. It would still be a desert. But some areas would be oases. <clears throat> the idea of it not boiling off the water into hydrogen oxygen comes from testing. One of the things that happens if water evaporates in an atmosphere and it goes to a low pressure and it's blown supposedly into space is that the molecules have to not form a trailing like comet-like tail behind the planet as it moves through space at a fairly high speed and eventually just fall into it again because gravitational pull would cause the material to keep moving with it, even with its inertia. What actually allows the water to boil off into space is that the water breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen. 
Now that would mean that the oxygen concentration on Mars would jack way up. Well, that's where the carbon dioxide is, and that's why it's rusty looking. Okay, but then the hydrogen would also do another thing. There are two types of hydrogen, heavy and, li and light. Heavy hydrogen contains a neutron, electron, and proton. Normal hydrogen, light hydrogen we'll call it, only has electrons and protons. That means you'd end up with it concentrating heavy hydrogen and also heavy water on the surface of Mars. That has not been borne out, which means it's not blowing it into space, which means our presumption that it would keep doing that based on current conditions is a little flawed. The new way of viewing this is that the planet had water content and temperature and atmosphere that would have con been conducive to it, because that would be obvious, and that the planet simply got colder and started condensing basically the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere into dry ice and condensing the water into ice. And the atmosphere that was there would produce sandstorms and such, which would just keep covering the ice, preserving it effectively. And every bit of frost that forms on the top gets pushed under because it can. It gets underneath the surface, slightly liquefies again, and starts trickling down because gravitational pull is more intense than the boil-off factor. At low gas pressures, water will evaporate. But if it's underneath soil, this creates a form of pressure that keeps it from boiling off anymore. In essence, the atmospheric conditions on Mars, instead of boiling it off and putting it into space, which apparently did not happen, that's just it, just we don't see evidence for it, had the effect of making it be under a blanket of dust and dirt every time there was a sandstorm and pushing it deeper underground. We see evidence of underground movement of glaciers. They're obviously glaciers and they move every year. We see water flow. There's a couple of animated GIFs that you can look up that show images taken months apart showing water flow that literally has water. It's brine water. It's, it's, it's not water like you and I would think, but if you were there standing there, if you could, you would see what looked like liquid water. It's not just methane turning into a liquid or, or something else going on. It does contain water. There have been enough tests done various ways to show that it's, it's probably just water mixed with other things. <clears throat> now, this has had an interesting effect. Again, one or three million cubic miles of ice as water on another planet isn't sounding like much. But again, there's an entire crater with 100, 500 million cubic miles, or 500, excuse me, 500 cubic miles, not million, 500 cubic miles of ice you can go after if you needed to. And you just bring it up to normal temperatures like you and I are in, in the normal air pressure level, and it'll just separate. You can just boil it and do what we do already. Human beings have gotten very good at getting water out of anything. Last, there is going to be one image that I've archived, uh, have an archive link to, that shows ice just under the surface being shown by pointing a camera at the ground and looking where a, the one of the landers was rolling by and just scraped the dirt. It's just under the surface. It would take you a lot of work to find it, and you'd have to still purify it, but it's there. So it's kind of funny that an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie kind of showed that, you know, if you could get all of this stuff to melt at the same time and form a vapor layer, it would suddenly create its own conditions of having a gas pressure change that would be potentially high enough and a temperature change high enough to make a sustained atmosphere. Mars, even though it would have you know, 1% of the water that the Earth does, if it was all in the atmosphere at the same time, that would create an air pressure level that would sustain it, at least temporarily. And if any reactions happened, you would have a release of oxygen from the, from the carbon dioxide and some other reactions that would happen because of some of the other minerals that would start liberating oxygen from the material in the ground, potentially. Anyway, another Earth-like planet besides Venus that's interesting. And again, if Venus was pulled into a slightly different orbit, somehow, we can always hope, it would push a planet with almost exactly the same gravitational pull we have away from the sun, and it would start solidifying all the stuff that won't solidify, like everything, like literally lead runs like water on that planet, and it would cause the release of the planet from being a hellscape. It would be an extremely warm and potentially survivable planet, maybe. Or it was. Interesting, though. Anyway, um, this is partially because of someone's question on the channel. And yes, there are experiments that have been done 
that duplicate what happened there on, on Mars, yeah, if we landed there, we would be able to get water. And because humans are pretty good at recycling water and filtering and just using whatever refuse we have to grow food, like that movie with my Damon, or whatever his name is, um, yeah, it pretty much... I still think Elon Musk is an idiot for trying to go there, but it's a lot more useful than going to the moon. I mean, let's be blunt. And landing on Venus is sort of like landing on the sun. It's not not what you want to do. But yeah, I mean, I, I knew this already, but I didn't actually look up the numbers because every year it gets, we find that there's more and more water. At this point, we're pretty sure that it has 1% of what the Earth does. Maybe it'll be more next year. We don't know everything. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck.